Yarny. Hello, welcome to the crochet stress ball tutorial. All you need to know to complete this project is the magic ring, the single crochet, the increase technique, and the invisible decrease technique. I'll explain each stitch and technique at least once in this video, but we also have very slow and detailed tutorials on each of these, which will be linked down below. For materials, I'm using this posh yarn in the Ube color from Big Twist, which is in the bulky size. Feel free to use any type of bulky size yarn if you don't have the posh yarn, but I'd encourage you to use the posh yarn as it's super soft and easy to work with. Also, if you don't use this size and type of yarn, your stress ball might end up too small or too big. You'll also need some filling and for stress ball, there's actually multiple ways of filling your project. It can be regular fiber fill or yarn scrap, or if you filled up a balloon with some sand or flour, that would work too. I know sand isn't really accessible to everyone, but I live on an island, so believe me, it's actually a valid option. Aside from yarn and filling, you'll need a six millimeter crochet hook and some scissors to cut the yarn. Let's start. So the first round here is to do a magic ring and six single crochet inside the magic ring. So take the tail end of your yarn and put it on top of your fingers like this. Just split your fingers like this a little bit. Then take your working yarn, which is the side of the yarn that's attached to your ball of yarn, making a loop like this and forming a cross on top, just like this. Take your crochet hook, inserting under the cross. Now use your hook to grab the top left portion of the yarn like this to pull it forward. And then your hook is basically facing downwards. You will twist it up like this. At this point, you should still have a cross like this. Use your hook to grab the top left portion of the yarn again like this and pull the yarn through the loop on the hook which will form your magic ring. Now with your magic ring completed, we will do the six single crochet inside the magic ring. So insert your hook in the ring, grab onto the yarn, pull it back through the ring, and then you have two loops on your hook. Grab the yarn with your hook to pull it through the two loops. And that's how we do a first single crochet. So we're simply going to do five more. So this is my second and then my third, my fourth, fifth, and sixth. So this is my sixth single crochet inside the magic ring. Now we're going to use the tail here and pull on it gently to tighten the ring so that it shuts just like this here. Now we're basically going on to round number two, which is simply increasing the size of our circle here. We have six stitch in total in after round one. After round two, we're going to have 12 stitches in total. To achieve that, we're going to do increases in each of the six stitch, which means you will insert two single crochet in each stitch, which is an increase. So insert my hook under the first stitch grabbing onto the yarn and then I have two loops on my hook, wrap the yarn around my hook to pull it through two loops. I have my first single crochet. Now I'm going to insert a single crochet in the same stitch. And this is how I do an increase. Now moving on to the next stitch, I'll again do two single crochet in the same stitch. So one and two. And I'll keep going until I have 12 stitches in total. Now for round three, we will increase the number of stitches to 18. So to achieve that, we're going to do one single crochet in the next stitch, followed by an increase, single crochet increase all along. So one single crochet in the next stitch. Then I am going to do an increase in the following stitch, meaning two stitch in one stitch. Then 
My third stitch is simply a single crochet. And then I'm doing an increase again. So on until the end of the round to achieve 18 stitches. Now for round four, we're going to increase the size of our circle again from 18 stitches in round three to 24 stitches in round four. To do that, we're going to do single crochet in the next stitch, single crochet in the following stitch, and then two single crochet in the same stitch, meaning an increase in the next stitch. So single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, single crochet, increase all around until we reach 24 stitches. So my first stitch of the round is a single crochet. Second stitch of the round is a single crochet. Third stitch of the round is an increase. And then fourth stitch of the round is a single crochet. Fifth stitch of the round is a single crochet. Sixth stitch is again an increase. And so on. Now, after I'm done with round four, for round five, round six, and round seven, it's going to be very easy. We're simply going to do 24 single crochet in each of the three next rounds. So round five, we're doing 24 single crochet all around. Round six, 24 single crochet all around. And round seven, 24 single crochet all around. So super, super straightforward. So single crochet in each and every stitch. So I've just completed my round seven and we're basically only have three rounds left to complete our ball. And if your ball is a little pointy at the bottom here, don't worry, it will resolve itself once you start filling your project. Now, for round eight, we're basically starting to decrease the amount of stitches so we can shut the circle. And so the circle is going to get smaller and smaller. For round eight, we want to end up with 18 stitches at the end of the round. To do so, we're going to do two single crochet in the two next stitches followed by an invisible decrease, which means single crochet, single crochet, invisible decrease, single crochet, single crochet, invisible decrease, and so on. So the first stitch is a single crochet. Then we're doing a single crochet in the second stitch. Now the third stitch is an invisible decrease, meaning we're merging two stitches into one. So to do so, we're inserting our hook under the front loop of the next stitch. The front loop is the strand of the loop that's closest to you. So you insert your hook like this under the front loop only and then immediately you insert your hook under the front loop of the following stitch as well and then you grab onto the yarn to pull it through the two front loops and then you have two loops on your hook wrap the yarn around your hook to pull it through the two loops now you have your first invisible decrease now the fourth stitch of a round is a single crochet again fifth stitch another single crochet and then six stitch, invisible decrease one more time. So we're basically doing this alternation of single crochet and then single crochet and then invisible decrease until we reach 18 stitches in total. So before we move on to round nine, you can start filling your project a little bit. So you can use fiber fill, as I mentioned, a yarn scrap, or whatever you have to fill your ball. I'll be using some yarn scrap to fill mine because I simply do not have access to fiber fill, unfortunately. Now for the ninth round, we're decreasing the number of stitches to 12 in total. 
To achieve this, we're going to alternate between single crochet, invisible decrease, single crochet, invisible decrease, all around until we reach 12 stitches in total. So my first stitch is simply a single crochet. Then I'm doing an invisible decrease. Then a single crochet. Then invisible decrease and so on. After round nine, I would suggest you to fill up your ball again because round 10 will be our last round and it will shut the, the, the ball completely. And I would definitely suggest you to fill more than you would usually do just because if you want your stress ball to have some squeeze, just make sure you have enough filling in it. Once you're satisfied with the ball and how it's filled, our last round, round number 10, is simply doing six invisible decrease so that we bring our total number of stitches to six in total. So go ahead and do six invisible decrease to finish our ball. Once we're done with the six decreases, the top of your ball might still be a little open, which is perfectly fine because we're simply going to shut the hole with our crochet hook just by weaving the end. So you can cut your yarn. Doesn't need to be too long, but don't cut it too short. And so pull onto your yarn to secure that last stitch. And then we will simply use our crochet hook, weaving the ends back and forth in and out. So just like this around the last round that we just did. So I'm simply using my crochet hook, pulling the yarn in and out around the stitches. And at the same time, I'm pulling onto the yarn so that it tightens that little hole that we had. You can also work a knot. So just grab onto the yarn like this, but don't pull it all the way through. So make a loop like this and then insert the tail end inside the loop and then pull onto the tail so that it secures the yarn in a knot so that it will not be unraveling. Then you can just randomly use your hook to try to hide this yarn at various random places before we cut the yarn. So once your yarn is well hidden, just simply cut it. And just like that, you have a nice homemade, soft, and screechy stress ball. You can make it for everyone in your family, especially those that are in high stress jobs. This is always handy and it's really super fun to play with. Really hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please don't forget to hit the like button to subscribe to our channel and make sure to hit the bell button as well in order to get notifications for all of our future tutorials. Thank you so, so much for watching. See you next time.